Hi well, guys, welcome to the channel. So here we are in sunny Spain with the uh, Lazonti T2 310. Uh, this is my own personal bike. <clears throat> I've had it now for uh, just up for nine months. So um, it's been a good bike. There's been a few little issues, which is what I'm going to go through in this video, as well as just a walk around and have a little look at some of the features on this bike. So a couple of additions, obviously it don't come as standard, is the uh, the box. So I got one of these off the internet. Um, bought the plate and the box separately because I managed to get a better price in doing it that way. Um, I put up a screenshot of that so you can see what I paid for it. Also the seat, it's a little bit hard. So um, I bought this cushion again. Uh, I put a screenshot up of that so you can see. It's just uh, it's like memory foam. Um, so it just makes it more comfortable. Obviously, it only does the uh, the driver. Um, you can get larger ones to do the uh, the passenger as well. And obviously, in the sun out here, it protects the seat a little bit from the uh, the strong rays of the sun. Um, they're the only two mods I've done. Um, I've done roughly two and a half thousand kilometres on it, so um, it's been pretty good. Um, as I say, I'll go through the issues that I found. Uh, in just a second as well as pound round go through some of the controls because it does have a lot on it for the money I mean these bikes aren't mega bucks um, but then you can compare it to maybe the BMW 310 uh, I think that's a GS that's a very similar bike what I was looking at but I don't know I went with this one in the end so a couple of additions I do like on these bikes is standard obviously they come with these strong bars so should it fall over um, then it's it's protecting the uh, the bike a bit also you do have these um, call to touch um, on the exhaust system so uh, it stops stops anyone from burning their legs if uh, the, the passengers on there um, but there has been complaints apparently that obviously because they're quite short the heat's going up here so um, the legs of your passenger do tend to get hot um, one of the other features is the screen on the front this uh, goes up and down I'll show you a little bit later in the video uh, which is quite good um, normally it's more expensive bikes that have that obviously you've got the LED lights um, which is very nice all little additions that I probably would have had to done should I have bought a, a cheaper bike obviously the guards to protect the, uh, the clutch and the brake uh, which is very good then on this side, you've got your eco, um, eco and sport mode, which uh, 
then transfers to the screen so you can see it clearly. Obviously you've got your cut-off switch there, indicators, your start, uh, the lock. It can be a little bit temperamental I found sometimes. I don't know if it's when I don't use it for a little while um, and then the battery maybe loses a bit of power. Um, but you'll see what I mean in a bit. The, uh, the fuel, so it pops up on a switch. Um, and then the seat is electric. God knows why they've done that electric, because I mean there's nothing under it. Okay, here's the key fob. Um, so this needs to be near the bike to start it. <clears throat> so let's push the little red button. And then you hear it click. And then you should see the screen come on. It does its little thing. So there you go. And now obviously it'll beep a few times. So now if you need to do your fuel, pop up for your fuel in there, which is quite neat. And then obviously the seat, which opens up. And then you've just got your battery. It's probably a little tool kit in there somewhere. But not a lot in there, no storage. So hence the top box. And then for the screen, you just push select and then that brings you up with your interface hopefully you can see it in the sun and then you can pick different um, settings for your screen so you go through there I've just got mine obviously on casual um, push it again uh, you've got your interface for your clock settings brightness all other different units Bluetooth for your phone um, yeah all the little bits there so I'll try and do a detailed video to that in the shade somewhere so that's clearer uh, let's go to the screen so there's a screen going down and going up which is a nice feature <clears throat> so now we come to the issues that I've found so if you lose this you're gonna have a nightmare trying to replace it I thought I lost one of these um, and I went to the main agent website I went to the place where I bought it from no one seemed to be able to reproduce this key fob. They was all saying, oh no, you need a whole new system for the bike and it was going to cost like five, six hundred euros. So fortunately, I found this in a jacket. Um, but don't rely on this rubber because on the other one, the rubber split and that's where I thought I lost the key fob. So, which brings me on to the issues with this bike. Parts seem to be a nightmare. Um, it's... Yeah, it's, it's a real shame. Um, that's all I can really say. Um, obviously, some parts may be easier than others. Obviously, the key fob's got to be programmed to the bike and everything else, so maybe that was the issue. Um, my only other issue with this has been the brake. The rear brake just seems a little bit soft. I've adjusted it a few times. Um, but yeah, it just feels a little bit weak. Um, and then the other day, I had the tyre pressure sensor come on. So I just had to um, pop some air in the tyres. Oh, there you go. Because I've come away from it, the, um, the alarm's gone off. Uh, oh, and when I was at the garage, because of the position of this and the spokes, some of the air connectors are uh, very difficult to get on there. I think I've even scratched my bloody wheel in the process of trying to do it the other day. Um, so yeah, that was a little bit annoying. But I went to another garage and then it had a better fitment, so that wasn't too bad. Uh, handling on the road, really good. Uh, really light and easy, so quite nice to ride. Clutch is good. Lights are very bright, um, although I haven't done a lot of night riding yet. Uh, Tyres, yeah, that's the other issue. So if you're going off road on loose surfaces like this, then... I don't know why, uh, these tyres just seem really bad. Um, I had a little 125 before, doing some of the same little routes and it used to handle a lot better. Uh, and didn't seem to slip as much. So I don't know if it's because this is a slightly heavier bike, but yeah, that's, um, that's what I found. So if anything, that would be a nice little upgrade. Maybe go some knobbly tyres or something. I know they're quite expensive now, but um, that would be a good thing to do. It's all down to the tyres and at the end of the day. But the bike's pretty cool. Uh, as I say, it's just these parts. So once they sort themselves out, getting the parts and making them more easily available or alternative parts that you can use, then 
it would be, I don't know, a really good bike. So, seems to be reliable and, um, and economical. Good size tank. I'll put up the stats as well for the bike because I can't remember it off the top of my head. I know it's got a 19 inch wheel on the front and a 17 on the back. Uh, that's obvious because you can tell by the tyres. Um, but it's got all the kit on it, all the goodies. There is a USB on it as well so you can charge your phone. Uh, it's in a really stupid place. I think it's down here under this little cover. You can just see it there. You've got to get this off and then there's a USB. But really stupid position for that so I don't think I've even used it. Oh yeah, there is storage as well. Cut the coins in there. So um, yeah. So I guess the bit, if you haven't even had one of these yet, is to see what it sounds like. So let's see if my fob works. In close. Lovely. Let it do its thing. And then let's give her a start. Obviously make sure it's in neutral. That can be an issue sometimes trying to get it in neutral. And warm now so just done about 30 k on it just to warm her up ticks over quite nice a little bit tinny I suppose but then it's only a free 312 cc There you go. My little review on the uh, Zonti T2, this is, uh, the 310. I know there is a 350 now. It probably might be a little bit nicer on the power. Uh, but I think overall they kept it the same. They kept the spoke wheels, the mag wheels. For some reason, a lot of the manufacturers go away from them. Maybe because they crack or whatever. So, yeah. But, nice little bike. And for the money, I mean, I bought this pre-owned. Um, I think it only had three and a half thousand on the clock kilometres, and I paid three six fifty for it in euros. So, uh, considering from my one two five, it cost me nine hundred euros to upgrade. So I think that was pretty good. So um, value for money, I, I can't really fault it on that. Okay, thanks for watching the video. Please subscribe, give us a like, maybe a share.